Hallelujah. <clears throat> we thank God for this wonderful opportunity to be together and uh, provoke one <clears throat> another onto good works. We thank God. Provoke one another oh, onto good works. So I am uh, the leader here to be together. But the way we provoke one another onto good works is that um, if you found anything, I said, any message I gave, any scripture I gave that you have disagreement, then you write to us. Our four from radio or Christ the King, you write to us so that we know that what we said, <clears throat> not in an insulting way. I, I don't really care, but you can even insult me. It comes to our territory, so I, I don't want to caution you as a Christian. That the Lord Jesus Christ says that any man who says Raka, if you say Raka, you are going to face judgment. So in fact, you are be very careful the way I talk about people and the way I insult people. That's all. Apart from that, I don't mind what you say. I don't mind that at all. So don't worry about that. So let us know, have feedback on what we are doing and that's we will also give our point of view about what we believe are the biblical way, the biblical uh, worldview. The biblical worldview. We will also give our point of view about that. Hallelujah. Biblical way. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Some technical problems and technical difficulties, challenges. The Lord is good all the time. Hallelujah. Let me sing. Um, the Lord is my strength and song, and it's become my salvation. Hallelujah. This is from uh, our hymn book, Canticle number 56. Canticle number 56. From Psalm number 118, a selection of uh, verse 14 to 26 and 28 and 29. Psalm number, 50, uh, Psalm number 118. And uh, oh, it was good to hear. Kaiser King sang this with all the zeal and the might. The way we sing, I pray that it is also in our hearts. But we know them and sing them at home and stop singing worldly songs. Encouraging worldly music, promoting them. No, no. I was very happy that Sunday. Uh, I thank God for Christ the King celebrating my birthday for me. What wonderful! Our cassava party and everything went very, very well. And they were singing. Uh, the young people were singing a birthday song for me. And uh, my son Cornelius came and told me that uh, that is a worldly song, and so I was telling them to cut it off. I didn't understand until they explained to me. I thank God that I have, I'm raising people who will not allow earthly songs in the temple of the Most High God. Our young people may not know. You know, they may not know. And uh, we don't have to take our knowledge for granted. You know, don't, uh, don't assume that somebody, this evening I was talking to one of my fathers, we have decided to read at least once a week, read Bible together. So when we were reading Psalm 103 today, my father was talking about fear, the word, the word fear. And uh, in Psalm 103, and he said that this must uh, be reverence and honor, worship to God. And the uh, Spirit of God led me, gave me the right words to tell my father that, Father, what you are saying, the presupposition is that fear is a bad thing. The fear we know, trembling, trembling. Is bad. No. The Bible has, if the Bible wants to use reverence, 
the Bible will use reverence. If the Bible wants to use God's word, wants to use honor or worship, it's not in short supply in the Bible. Available. We want to play down on fear. I remember President Rollins saying that I don't fear God. It is because of these teachings about fear that uh, when my father is coming home from work, I will run away. My brother Michael and I, we will run away. I don't remember the others, but we will run away because my father was terrible. So we will run away. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. And we have succeeded to place the liberal mind in our society. We have succeeded in playing down on the word fear. No. Leave it where it is. But some of us are very obstinate and rebellious. And we need fear. But most of us are afraid, fear, afraid of um, shame, embarrassment, disgrace. And that is why we will not go to Walmart and steal. Because we are afraid of the consequence. We are fear that we will be disgraced. Fear is not a bad thing. My dear father, the Bible gives you the authority to discipline. You spare the word, you spare the child. That is what the Bible says. That there is absolutely nothing wrong with fear. Of course, excess. And then there's the other side of fear, of coronavirus, fear. That one, no. If there is any way you should be afraid of anything in this world, that fear must be God, the fear of God. Apart from that, no. But the fear to run away from sin, that God is a very terrible God of justice, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And uh, I'm very encouraged to teach. This evening, I'm going to talk about forgive. Forgive and forgive. So many misconceptions that we have about our attitude in life, the works of the flesh in us. We justify them. We do. We justify them. Oh, thank you, Lord. When I was talking about my birthday party, I want to have to thank all, the, especially my men's fellowship. Oh, they were wonderful. And the women's fellowship and everybody. Christodia, God bless you for all the gifts that we received. And Christodia added a letter that uh, she was contributing to sow in my ministry. So I'm going to present a daily devotional for her. That Christodia, if you are sowing into my ministry, then you must receive blessings from me. And the blessing is that I want you to succeed in life with a biblical view. With a biblical view. So we are going to work on that. But in the meantime, Christodia, thank you. Thank, I thank God for the life of your father and your mother and for all the support we received on Sunday for our birthday. We need to celebrate. I tell the church that we need to celebrate. We do not wait for people to die. To die. And that brings me to so far as I'm thinking. Oh, I was called the chairman of his party. And it was an honor process. I remember one of our pastors traveled outside Ghana. I haven't seen him in a long time. Came back from London and saw, met my wife and I. At, uh, I won't give details, otherwise I'll give the person away. So we met this Methodist, Methodist minister from uh, where we are very close to us. He has been away. We haven't seen Met me and uh, at, uh, I believe it was the National Theater. Joyful way. My brother-in-law, Dr. Kuzin Safo, Lord protect my brother-in-law and all the frontline workers of coronavirus, protect them for us. We were going to, we, it was annual. We had to go to Joyful Way. You know, my wife's brother, Joyful Way. I have to stop everything and go. Hey, that one, I don't play with it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I like it or not. You have to go. My wife loves the brother. Uh, so we have to go. We went to National Theater. And then we met this pastor. We haven't seen in a long time. Long time. And he, I hear him call me, Jay. 
and uh, in my language, are you still following after Sanjayji? <laughs> I was shocked. I was shocked. My brother, it's a long time. Can't you ask me how I'm doing with my wife and uh, anything? We are coming to do Methodist politics. I'm waiting for all these people that you see the thing that they did to this man. So far, I'm watching. As for you, you honored a man whilst he was alive. So if you could feel your point, I know you. You honored a man. I know people who honored a man. And I also know people who said bad things about a man. I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them. Because this hypocrisy must stop. Somebody is alive. You said bad things about the person. And when the person dies, you want to come and say that he was what? So I have a list of all the people I know who said bad things about this man. Especially in 2002, Accra Synod at Adabaka. What is the name of this place? Oh, and his booth, Reverend and his booth, Reverend and his booth. The Synod. After the Synod, I went to presiding. And uh, the leader of our party, I was the party chairman. And uh, I said, Papa, oh no, yeah, he was the one who asked us, so you were there and these people said all these things about me. And uh, that was the day he told me that, I think I have to put this thing down and go and rest. He said he wanted to resign. God is my witness. He told me that he was going to resign. So when we went to commercial conference and people were saying that the man doesn't want to go and he has brought some proposal, nine years they used it to insult this man. Oh my God. When I say these things, somebody might tell me that I'm a litigant. No. I want people to stop being hypocrites. That's all. The dishonesty is too much. Dishonesty. And after all these years, as an angel, it was a gift to the church. No, it was a gift God gave us. We didn't know how to handle him because of politics in the church. When we met at Cape Post, he was inducted into office. Immediately after that, he gave us a well-documented vision I have a picture. I will look everywhere to put it on Facebook or everywhere that people will see. I'm talking about things that I have personal knowledge about. He gave his vision. Immediately, I made copies. Every youth fellowship branch had a copy of it. Anybody who can say, please, you can say whatever you want to say about this man. But what he has brought to us is a blessing. Let us take hold of it and help him to succeed. No, no, no. We need to go and retrace that document. If we haven't done that already, when I read about things that people are proposing in the church, oh, sad. He was ready. Day one, he was ready. A wonderful man. I even thank God you gave him more years because one time, just uh, he was in, uh, he was stationed, I believe, at St. John's, Achimota, New Achimota. And at that time, New Achimota was part of the North Accra circuit. Wonderful man. Wonderful man. When he comes to meet him, he sits down and listens. Didn't, he was a very, he is the, he has, he's the elected president at that time. And Sophie Biata was the Secretary Minister. He would come to meetings. And he would sit down, even though you could see that he did he agreed with it, the way we were going, the new constitutional provisions that have been made and the system that the church was, he was, I believe, one of the architects of it. So he was very passionate about it. But you come to meet him, not in any confrontation manner. Or the, no, he honored Sophie Biafra. He did. And I learned that, uh, I think it was Sophie Biafra or he worked with Sophie Viata in a pump circuit, his first station of Oh, wonderful partnership. One Sunday he came to preach at Calvary. 
and uh, I believe it was Mrs. Duka. I, I, I was struggling between Mrs. Duka and Mrs. Bozele. Mrs. Duka. I am, can confirm that it was Mrs. Duka. Mrs. Duka bought bread for him. Nice bread. That reminds me of my brother. My brother A.B. Sam came to Calvary and said that I should buy bread for him. And I was very happy to do that, that I was working and could be a blessing to my brother A.B. Sam. But Sam says that I buy bread for him, and I did. Told him that, brother, why don't you bring your membership here to Calvary so that we worship together? That's another matter. So far, St. Jim. So Mama Duka bought the bread and uh, we were going to his car. I was carrying the bread and then went to his car. Uh, we said goodbye, everything. Ah, the next morning, Monday, the presiding, the president elect at that time, he was president before he became presiding, the president elect at that time has been rushed to Kolebu. Oh, what is it? And it was feared that the man was, uh, the, the fear was that he was going to die. The Lord saved him. The Lord saved him. The Lord saved him. Great man. Great man of God. And I pray <clears throat> that as we pay tribute, the Lord will see him the way we saw him. And I thank God that he had years, <clears throat> he had years to reflect on his ministry. And then the Lord who prepared him for that. We thank God for great men of the church. I thank God for their lives. Only for the year, you know, I may mean that. Only the year, then you turn, let us say, we've been out already. Only for the year. Wow, Kasabana, that never to my. What can you do? What can you do? You are human. If somebody is doing something, this is time. This time will come. Oh, the 2002 Synod. What is this? Is this the church? Is this the church? I remember Sophie who we were so attacked, the business committee, we were so attacked leading the discussions. We were so attacked that Sophie Donnie Kwame. Bishop Denny Kwame told me that, hey, young man, I can't stand for this. He left. He left. And then, so there are groups attacking this man, and then there are groups who will shut you down because you are trying to explain that, look, what you are saying is not good. There is a proposal from the Bishop's Council that the years for bishops should be nine years. There was nothing said about the presiding bishop. The bishop's council met. Not one bishop was able to stand in defense. They played the thing as if it was as if you was promoting this. Wickedness. Not one single bishop. Why? Because that was the last year of the man. So he had no control over anything. But you are a bishop. What can he do to you? If you think that was his first year, you are a bishop. Can the presiding bishop remove you? No. What they did to this man what they did to this man at the synod. I don't want to talk about things. I'm waiting for people to say things and then I will react. I thank God for the life of Sofa Martin and people like him. Sofa St. he was a good man. He was a good man. And please, those of you who know our relationship, you know that I even had a problem. He had a problem with me. They had a problem with me. And people jubilated that there's a fight in the party. What did I do wrong? We interviewed um, for Sentinel, Christian Sentinel. We interviewed uh, President Kumsa, T.W. Kumsa. We interviewed. And the idea was that uh, Mr. Abisam, God bless you. We were talking about these things at Calvary, about the, the, the living condition of Sofo Kumsa. That's what, what let's be calling himself comes in. That is the best known. And um, Mr. Abe Sam is one of the people who were concerned about that. We talked about it. I pray that he had not forgotten. So we interviewed him and we're going to 
uh, use the interview to raise funds, to change his furniture, and to make sure that he lives more comfortable than people were talking about. I went to, for the interview, I went, Miss Kunsi, this is uh, the daughter, the, the daughter, the, the brother's daughter. I think the, the man is uh, Jesse Kunsi. This is uh, Thomas Wallace Kunsi. I'm talking about President Kunsi, but the brother was uh, Jesse Kunsi. He died a long time ago. The daughter, I worked with the daughter, uh, Miss Kunsi. And uh, Miss Kunsi, we went for the interview, said, ah, yo, uh, why didn't you record this? Because the thing that the man is talking about, we don't know. The family member, how he got into the ministry and uh, his, his father called him and asked him whether there was something wrong with him. Because the father was a rich Koko uh, clerk, Koko Krachi, yes, Koko clerk. So why would you go to join the Methodist ministry? For what? He told us all the stories and the misconception. They don't know as a family member, they don't know. Oh, she, she was dying to go and listen to that. So she, I was not going to have the interview with her. We went, it was good. We didn't record it. I said, I promise. I said, Papa, we'll come again for a follow-up because of what we were doing, the whole program. Oh, can you believe this? The day the Christian Sentinel published it, that was the day Papa Kumsen died. That was the day Papa Kumsen died. And somebody went and told the um, presiding, told presiding about what had happened. The, in the Christian Sentinel, the interview I went and presiding was mad because I was saying something bad about the, I don't know, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. The person who separated us was Commander Arthur. Commander was the one who separated us. It was bad. And we didn't know time. People have heard that, about that, that the, the people are fighting. The party is, uh, is gone. They are fighting. But that was not a problem at all. We didn't let that go. The next time you met me, it was as if nothing has even happened. Great man of God. And the one time I went to him and I told him that, Papa, you have a problem with Justice Lamptey. Justice Lamptey. All because of that across you know, that I'm talking about, 2002. People have succeeded in driving a wedge between presiding and Jesus Lamptey. So, one time, uh, Jesus Lamptey called me as an Jesus boy. <laughs> as an Jesus boy. And I also said that as an Jesus friend. And he called me aside and uh, told about how the differences, and he doesn't understand why I said, okay. I'm going to preside in immediately. And uh, we are going to resolve the matter today. So I went to him. And I said, Papa, whatever difference you have with uh, Justice Amte has to come to an end today. He said, Well, I have no problem with you. I said, Yeah, that I know you will say that, but he has told me that your relationship, you used to be better than this. So we need to settle that. He said, So what do you want me to do? I said, I'm going to him. I'm going to call you. I want you to pick the phone and speak, and then let's settle the matter. I went to Jesse Slamty, called Papa at the office, picked the phone. I handed over the phone to him. I said, Presiding is on the line. <laughs> oh, great man. Great man. Great man. And uh, that day, Jesse Slamty went to him, and everything was, and came to an end. Great man. Uh, Zofi Beata used to say that his head is not like means safe for him to keep things in. And uh, these people, they, they no, wonderful. Like uh, President Dixon. Like President Dixon. And uh, you, when you get close to these people, you know that no, 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 it is not as we saw them from afar at all, at all, at all. And uh, people say that. Uh, some people are dictators and they are this and they are that. It's not true. So Dixon was the, the softest person you can get in this world. Even he was saying that uh, when we close from leaders meeting, then they go and do the another because people were afraid. It's not, they, so Dixon will not do you anything for what you say. He doesn't mind, he doesn't care. He know, he doesn't, 
victimize anybody for if anybody was victimized on the job protection, somebody did it in his name, not him. He will not do it. God is my way. I can testify of that. Oh, these people were great, great men of God from afar. And I pray that the bitterness, especially with the elections, the bitterness in the church with elections will die down. And that is why I don't think that there is even any need for all these elections. There's no need. There's no need. Presiding Bishop, let's go to conference and determine that we are going to hold the next conference in Sunyani. At that conference, we ordain the Sunyani Bishop as, a, as the presiding. End of story. We are the presiding for two years. When we finish, or otherwise, let's elect uh, the next presiding, and he will be there for life until he dies. We are not going to appoint anybody. What is the difference between that and the Pope? Let's appoint a presiding. So live on the on the seat. Who, who is that? the church? The Methodist society is what is important. The presiding bishop. What, the, what does he do that we should spend all our time creating enemies for ourselves and that this man does not talk to this person because of election and all that? Even the bishop. You abolish all these things. No, I'm not saying that there should be no bishop. Last time I was listening to Sofa Samuel Jedu about uh, an interview he had with uh, Sofa Moses. Why haven't we adopted Ephesians 4, 11? If we are talking about biblical pattern of Episcopacy, just because of the name Bishop, no, then we should go the full line. Identify the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, the, the apostles. The apostles, the prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. Let us identify all of them. Ephesians 4, 11. Call it fivefold ministry. Let's identify all of them. Oh, presiding, we thank God for your life. You have joined the crowd of witnesses, so I can speak to you. May the Lord keep you. And then uh, pray for us, sinners, that the Lord will have mercy on us, so we will also accomplish half of what you did, and then uh, our souls will be fit for the sky. I thank God. Mama, comfort. The Lord be with you and the children. And I believe that the Methodist Church has lost, but God has gained. So there is no loss there. To God, all praise and glory. I give thanks for, I think he served the NPP also very well, the National Cathedral. We pray that it will be built. And one of the halls will be named after him. If you are not going to name the whole cathedral after him, name one of the halls after him. Name something after him at the cathedral. Great man of God. Great man of God. Oh, I thank God for his life. And I thank God for our party, those who supported him. Those who supported him. Uh, his secretary, Ophoy Wright, yes, Bishop Ophoy Wright, needed somebody humble like him, Bishop Ophoy Wright, to work with a man. Mrs. Okai, Naomi Okai. I believe the word, I'm not sure about that, but this is okay. Great people who have served our church. And for all of you who opposed us and Timpi, for whatever, in fact, there were some of our people who were, who hated us and Timpi because of uh, Sofa Dixon. So, and I know them, I can mention their names. I can mention their names. They had no qualm with him, except because of the defense of Sofa and uh, sometimes it made it look like um, fanti ashanti war in the church. No, they were worshiping personalities. They were worshiping personalities. That was why that fight was carried on. Because the next person who came was free speaking. But because of Professor Dixon, you know, because of Professor Dixon. We're all doing this because of Professor Dixon. And the man himself, Professor Dixon, that they were fighting for, did not care a hoot about that. He didn't. He didn't care. I can tell you, during the 
suffer serious troubles. We come with my brother, Muslim Jason, we come all the way from Second League. Talk about things. He didn't care. The Lord have mercy on his church. The Lord is my strength and song, and it's become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord do it brilliantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord do it brilliantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Lord had chastened me so, but he had not given me over, me over unto them. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. These gates of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for the hast. I will praise thee for thou hast at me, and I become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This Lord do Lord doing it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send thou now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The second part of our program today, we are going to look at forgive. Sunday I was preaching about forgive. I thank God for a birthday opportunity to bless the church. With the word of God. Thank God. Thank God. With the word of the of God from Matthew, St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 18. St. Matthew's Gospel 18. And the verse number is 21. I normally read the, the whole chapter or chapters so that I don't have to speak, but because of time and because of the message. Let's read from 21 to 35. My son, Namese, my American son, read the, the scripture in fancy. He reads very well, except that here they don't want to open their, their mouth to, so it's very difficult to hear him sometimes reading. But he read it very well. I thank God. Even my daughters in Ghana, I don't think they can read my, our language. Last time I was going through the alphabet with uh, my daughter, Rebecca. As for Rebecca, perhaps she will be a, she will take my Bible and preach after me. She's very good with things of God. I pray that she, she's, uh, she's not playing that dad wants this, so I know. I want it to be from his heart. And I pray that she will do that for me. The word of God from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 18, and the verse number is 21 to 35. The word of God. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I have to forgive him. And then uh, the Apostle Peter suggested that, did I hear you say seven times? 
And the Lord said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. I don't know. I have refused to calculate that. I can just take my phone and calculate what it is. No, I have not done that. Because the Lord did not want us to count. That is why he gave us. The Lord will always, you know, this is, the Lord is a master of the extra mile. The extra mile. When you go with him with one standard, he will raise it up for you. He doesn't believe in mediocrity. Seven times. One for every, every day in the week. What are you talking about? 70 times 7. And you know the reason. He doesn't want you to count. How do I know that? Because God created me and you in his image. And what the character of God must reflect in us. So in Psalm number 130. Let's go there and let me read Psalm 130 verse 3. Don't count iniquity. Don't count sin. Forgive. Psalm number 130. Verse 3. This is what he says. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer, and let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Verse 3. And then 4. That is why we are here. If you, Lord, not you mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Iniquity. Marking of iniquity. How many times? Seven times. No, 70 times 7, because he doesn't want you to count. Assume the character of the Most High God and don't count iniquity. How do we count? You know, when our mothers used to buy on credit, if they have a wall, they will use a taco or paint to mark it. That today when I came, you gave me $20. The next day, $20. Or the next week, $20. Marking, marking of our indebtedness. If God should mark iniquity like the Susu collector does, who could stand? Let's read verse 4. But there is forgiveness with our God so that you will be feared. He doesn't mark iniquity. He doesn't mark iniquity. But there is forgiveness with him. And I assume his character and I forgive. Just forgive. Forgive. Well, he has to apologize. That is not what the Lord said. Forgive. Amen. Just forgive. You are waiting for your wife to apologize to you before you forgive. That is cheap. That is how the world behaves. We are Christians. Our standards are very high. No, we don't wait for our wives to apologize to us. We don't wait for our husbands to apologize before we forgive. No, we forgive. Why? Because God, our Lord God, Jehovah Elohim, has commanded us to forgive. Just like, forgive. He does not mark iniquity. So the first part is marking iniquity. He does not. 70 times 7 was to make sure that you don't mark iniquity. According to the word of God that came to you today. From Psalm 130 verse 3. If God should mark iniquity, who could stand? That there's forgiveness with him so that you will fear him. And when you fear him, you will forgive. You will obey his commands. You will forgive. Therefore, verse 23. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. 10,000 dollars. 10,000 cities. 10,000 talents. Fifteen. That was great money. Great money it was given the money to the servant to trade with it. You don't know what, but we can make suggestions. When they bought a car for the girlfriend, spent weekend with the girlfriend. Ah, ah, God's money. Last time I heard somebody. Somebody, I don't want to mention the name of the person for, because I hate this celebrating nonsense going on as when people are celebrities and you quote them and they think that, no. But it's instructive to hear. Of course, sometimes 
when they send you these things, you have to hear them and uh, even confirm agreed that last time I, I fell in love with some wisdom about uh, software agraja. I was so blessed by what so uh, this of Mami Kung Fu Agrada. And Ghanaians, please forgive it. We have had even a, a Sofu Kung Fu in our our history. A Roman Catholic priest who became Kung Fu and we called him Sofu Kung Fu. So of Mami Kung Fu is not nothing strange. You know, and they talk about the things that people are. Not long ago, we heard that uh, some lady got a house for $450,000. Ah, God has given you money. Osofu. Osofu, please. Don't use God's money for foolishness. Go and pay for a hotel and sleep with a woman. And they say when they come home, they come and tell their wife that they are fasting, they are waiting for the Lord. Because they are satisfying themselves. And it is true that the world well created as men. If you are not impotent and you are alive, there's no way you can be sleeping in the same bed with your wife. And go two months, three months without having the name. You, no, 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 no. So stop that. The misuse of the talent of the money that was given. We are just speculating. Misuse the money. And now it is time to pay back. Verse 24. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought a good 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii, the position of 10,000 talents and denarii, to tell you that this is a lesser amount. Pence upon dollars. This is nothing. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant also fell at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not. But when he went, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that what he had done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgive you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the, to, to the torture until he should pay all that was due to him. Verse 35. The end of this important person. Verse 35. So my heavenly father also will do you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Forgive. Otherwise the Lord God Jehovah will throw you into prison because you are a wicked soul. You did not forgive. And you know that prison is called hell. Today the church doesn't want to hear about that. As for unbelievers and atheists, we don't have anything to do with it. But it is strange that in the, in, the, in the house of God, when you talk about hell, people are complaining. That why are we always preaching about the negative? What do you want us to do? The Lord preached about hell more than heaven. What do you want me to do? He gives me the word to come and preach about hell. You want me to? I remember one time I preached at uh, Calvary and the Lord gave me a message that each one of you, old people after 70, know that when you sing the hymn, Nearer My God Today, you are telling God that you are getting closer. Oh, I was chastised. One man called me and said, that, Yo, what have I done to you? <laughs> Yo, what have I done to you? Oh, it reminds me of our uncle, Gwigwa Manfu. Wonderful man. Oh, wonderful people. Calvary. Wonderful people. The man asked me, Yo, what have I done to you? We're going to a funeral. And uh, with my wife, he said, What have I done? I said, What have I done? He said, do you know what my wife and children are doing to me at the house? Today, when I open my mouth, they will say that, nearer my God today. <laughs> it became a slogan. People listen. Last time I called and uh, one of us was referring to me, ministerial. And you were the people complaining about ministerial. So for uh, Kogani, we were complaining about ministerial and today they are the ones who were propagating ministerial. The heavenly father will throw you into prison. You don't believe that, eh? 
may the Lord have mercy on you. You don't think it's possible, eh? May the Lord have mercy on you. This work can available. It is not only about prosperity. This one will also come to pass if I were you. But let me make a, a very important point for me. Forgiveness. What is it? We have read a story about indebtedness that somebody owed money. That is one. You can forgive that. The Bible commands you to forgive if the person doesn't have the money to pay. Because there are some people who, especially in the church, who take on your advantage, go and take people's money and they refuse to pay. And then they will be going about complaining that we are in the church and they are not showing love. I've taken your money. You, you came to take the money and promised that you were going to bring it back in two weeks. You didn't bring it. And instead of you to have the humility. But once again, if you have to forgive, forgive. Because if you are waiting for people to come and humble themselves, no. We just sing the lowly and humble and learner of thee. We just sing it with our legs. Our heart is far from that. Nobody wants to do that. Forgive. So we are, we are not talking about indebtedness. Well, it is good that uh, the example, the parable that the Lord is giving us is about dollars, about cash, about building, about this. We came to take my shirt and uh, went to the party and sold it. And uh, disgrace. And all. We are talking about, this is material, I understand that. But the forgive we are talking about, which must be important to us in our fellowship tonight, is the forgiveness that somebody offended you. Somebody did something to you. And because of that, you are very angry and, and you have resentment and bitterness and you want to pay the person back. You want to revenge. My brother, my sister, stop it. Stop it. Forgive. The only way you can, you can, you can save your soul you know, the Florida pastor, the Florida pastor, also for Sylvester, if you are still also, if you are still a child of God, but we pray that the Lord will have mercy on your soul. I sense suicide around you. Don't kill yourself. Let the Lord use you. I remember Jima. I remember Moses. I remember David. I remember the Apostle Paul who was standing there when Stephen was being stoned to death. So, brother. Don't kill yourself like Judas. You have wronged our God. It's okay. But the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon will receive. So don't kill yourself. And I pray that Christians would understand that this is also a soul. No matter what he did. The soul. The vilest offender. So this wickedness will come about because you, you did not hear the voice of God that you must forgive and you are piling up anger upon anger, anger upon anger, wrath upon wrath, bitterness upon bitterness, resentment upon resentment. Forgive. If God should mark iniquity, you will not be there to be holding on to anger. And the question about our, 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 our angry spirit is when we say that um, there is something called righteous anger. Nonsense. Which part of the Bible are you quoting from? Righteous anger. And the Lord Jesus went to the temple and cleansed the temple because he was angry with the bananas. Are you Jesus? You are a follower of Jesus. You are not Jesus. And when he said that greater works we will do, he was talking about greater works to bring prosperity and blessing to people. Not to you seem to enjoy in your sin righteous anger. Do you think that if the, the word of God wanted us to keep anger, he would tell us to get rid of it? Get rid of your anger. And you are, defined, you are, you are recruiting anger. As, as what? Anger as righteous? Which part of the Bible is that? And don't sit there and think that I don't have things to hold on to. I can be a, I'm a terrible, angry person. And when the Lord showed me that anger is sin, works of the flesh, I knelt down, begged him to forgive me and get rid of my anger. Get rid of your anger so that you can forgive. And forgive, it doesn't matter. If you think you caught your wife, in bed with another man. Forgive. What is it? It's sin. It's sin. And I pray that because you forgive your husband or your wife, even for sexual immorality, that person will fear God. God does not mark iniquity. Don't count 70 times 7. Don't count it. I don't know it. 
the multiplication. I wasn't very good at arithmetic or mathematics. I'm not good at it. I've not calculated because Psalm 130 has already told me not to count. Do not count anything and just forgive. And I have a message for the young ones. When we say forgive and you are a young person, listen to me. This will not be pleasant to your parents and to you yourself. Because we have been taught wrong things that is very difficult to renew our minds about things of God. If you are a young person, the electoral age is, uh, but I will put it at 25. If you are below 25, you have nothing to forgive because you are not qualified to get angry. You know, forgiveness, I'm, I'm, I'm defining forgiveness. You must have something to forgive because somebody has offended you. If you are a child, there is no offense. You take no offense of anything. What did your father say to you or what did your mother say to you that you think you should be angry about? And people go and they have, we were, my mother, my parents, my father and my mother, they had six of us. We were all packed in one room. So we didn't have rooms for you to go and say that you are angry with your mother or your father and you go and bang door the house you are bringing down that you don't pay rent. You don't pay anything there. Children of today, when they even get money, they are thinking about buying the, themselves things. My son, when he got, got his uh, money from work, the first thing he did was to call one of his friends to take him to shopping. Came back with shopping. Didn't buy anything for us. I asked him, how are you going to work tomorrow since you don't buy gas for the car? And he's getting some sense. That's what they do. You do have no basis to get angry if you are a child. So when you are talking about forgiveness, you don't qualify. You don't have anything to forgive. Don't, don't, don't. Don't come under it at all. And please, let's teach our children so that they know they are, they are where they stand. You are angry about what? About what? So we are talking, this is adult business. People who, who are angry about things and they, and they are resentment and bitterness and they, they uh, leave room for vengeance. Learn from Joseph in Egypt. The brother sold him. And uh, Genesis chapter 50 was uh, when the, the father died, Jacob, Father Jacob died. The brothers, the rest of the brothers sent a uh, message. Perhaps Benjamin was not part of it, but he, he had to, because the brothers' wickedness have fallen on him. They sent a message to Joseph said, no, do you want to, do you want to place me in the, in the, put me in the position of God? I'm not God. You are not Jesus. You are a disciple of the Lord. So before you get angry and go and cleanse the temple, walk on water first. Go and heal the blind. Restore their sight. Heal the lepers. Wake Lazarus up from sleep. Bring him back to life from death. Go and turn water into wine. And above all, be prepared to be crucified. And then you can take the Lord Jesus Christ, the action of the Lord Jesus Christ, and use it as a basis to get angry. Forgive. And if you are a child, don't cultivate the habit of getting angry and tell me that I forget forgiving my father. Nonsense. What right, what authority do you have to forgive your father, your mother? No. There's no forgiveness in that. You forget about it. That's all. Because you do not get angry at all concerning that. No. Another man that I would love to talk about when it comes to uh, forgiveness, the most wonderful story that nobody talks about, Esau. Esau. You know, when uh, Jacob re was returning back home, after he ran away from his brother for what he did. Do you know? Esau met him on the way. He said, said brother, send people, forgive you. He said, what? Jacob, are you still thinking about this thing a long time ago? Oh, church, I tell you, that is the most, the most wonderful forgiveness story I have in the Bible. Esau. The man who had been condemned for losing his birthright, because, well, the Bible makes it very clear that he did not value his inheritance. I understand that. But it doesn't lie in our mouth, the lawyers will say that, for us to condemn him. 
What would you have done? That you were hungry and you came home, you were hungry. And then, how many of us fight with our wives because of food? And you have the nerve to talk about uh, uh, Esau. What were you expecting him to do? It is by grace of God that ours have not been recorded, but they've been recorded in the, in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray that we'll repent of all our sins before we get there. Esau said, brother, let's forget about it. Read that story. You will love it. May the Lord give you insight into that. The word of God brings illumination, light. Entrance of the word of God brings light. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. This opportunity to... Hallelujah. Hey, my brother Dominic. Uh, brother Dominic, how are you? Wonderful. When I, I talk about Brother Dominic, I remember his father. Wonderful man. Wonderful man. Uncle Fiandu. I can't forget him. I can't. Wonderful man of love. And also for Martin, hey, also for Martin is listening to us. Papa Zofu, God bless you. You honored Sofu as an entry. So when I read your tribute, I know it is coming from a sincere heart. But I am also waiting for those who insulted him, who will pay tribute to him. And I will talk about that. Because the hypocrisy must stop. Love, according to Romans chapter 12, must be sincere. Our love must be sincere. We should stop the hypocrisy. Stop the hypocrisy. So thank God for your life. Papaja, thank God. And for all of you who are uh, listening to us, God bless you. Please, forgive. Forgive and glorify God. Let's get rid of anger. And uh, the last scripture I want to give is from Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans 14, 12. Romans 14, 12. Very, very important that we read that scripture. Romans 14 and the verse number. So then, each of us shall give account of himself to God. So then, each of us, the servant you are reading about in Matthew 18, we will also have opportunity to give account unto ourselves. You want to play with that? If I were you, I will not. Let me sing my closing hymn. Worship and thanks and blessing and strength. I strive to Jesus. Jesus alone defends his own. When earth and hell oppress us, Jesus. We joy, we witness, Almighty to deliver. Our seal said to that God is true and reigns. A king forever, omnipotent redeemer. Our ransom souls adore thee, our savior that we find it now. And give thee all the glory, we sing thy name unshortened. Brought through our sore temptation with heart and voice. In thee rejoice the God of our salvation. Thy arm has safely brought us away. No more expected than when thy ship has through the deep by crystal was protected. Thy glory was a reward. Thine hand our lives did cover. And we, even we have passed the sea and march. Triumphant over the world and Satan's malice. Thou, Jesus, hast confounded, and by thy grace, with songs of praise, our happy souls resounded, accepting our deliverance. We triumph in thy favor, and for the love which now we prove shall praise thy name forever. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity to meet with our brothers and sisters and share the word of God. Thank you. I have no doubt that you will awaken our sleeping spirits and bring us into your light. That you will transform us by the renewing of our minds daily in Christ Jesus. You will pour out your spirit on us and reveal your word to us. Thank you. 
Please give your angel, angels charge over us in all our ways. We must believe in you and demonstrate that we believe in you by having faith, unafraid of coronavirus or anything. And let our innermost being from it flow living waters for your glory. Thank you. That you will direct our hearts into the love of God and the steadfastness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, I give you glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord be with you and the Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.